have had to deal with uh, some very scary situations that negatively affected my life, um, stalkers. Luckily, nothing like this has ever happened to me. Um, it's a movie. Um, and how do I deal with it? It's, I don't really know how to put it into words, but it's, a, it's just a fucked up feeling. That's all you can really say. And you try and get rid of, uh, remove yourself from the situation and move on as fast as possible. And sometimes it's, it's not that easy. Um, but yeah, it's happened. And uh, luckily I've never been seriously injured or harm or harmed or, or physically hurt, just psychologically, <laughs> obviously, because that gets you. Uh, the, f the first question in, in working with Soderbergh, uh, he's one of the smartest people I've ever met and also a creative genius, uh, which is very rare in this industry. Um, being on, on set with him was so strange because it's the quietest set I've ever been on my entire life. Uh, it was very, even after porn. <laughs> um, it, it was very meditative, that's the best way to put it. And so being on set where everything is so quiet, uh, it, it almost feels unnatural in a way. And I'm not sure if he shoots all of his films like that. Uh, the Girlfriend Experience was a, a small, low-budget, independent film, even though it's directed by Soderbergh. Um, but I enjoyed that, and, and I wish that that was the case more often, <laughs> um, now having worked in, in TV and film since then. And with Open Windows, uh, first and foremost, I did this movie because I'm a Nacho Vigalondo fan. And I, I love time crimes, I love extraterrestrial, and I think that he's also a rare person in, in filmmaking where he has his own voice. And I think in an industry that's so inundated with branding and marketing and, and numbers, uh, it's very difficult to feel a filmmaker's tone in his work. Um, it happens, it just doesn't happen overnight. And really interesting and, and different films take a lot longer to get made, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but I believed in, in this film and in Nacho and uh, at the end of the day, yeah, of course I'm, I'm happy with it. Oh. Well, I'm a cinephile. I love, I love... You're a B-movie, so... Yes, I love all cinema. I love the French New Wave. I, I love uh, the work of Fellini. I love John Cassavetes, um, the independent films of America in the 90s. Uh, but I also like really big, stupid comedies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I, I tend to lean towards uh, uh, films that are either more artistic or either challenging, like I think Open Windows was a very challenging film to make. Um, so I like everything. I try to watch as, as much as I can and I actually get, I travel so much that when I travel I feel so lucky that I get to see so many places all around the world. But the one complaint I always have is people say, don't you miss your home? Don't you miss this? Don't you miss that? The only thing I miss is my dog <laughs> and being able to watch movies. And I actually develop an anxiety when I can't watch movies. And it, watching a movie on, on the computer doesn't, I still do it, but it doesn't satisfy me. I still feel like oh, I'm missing out on something. It's a real anxiety, it's strange. With 16 cameras that Nacho used to, to film all the scenes, and then you have to portray like a character of flesh and blood. How difficult is it to, to focus on what you as an actor, as an actress are doing at that time while Nacho is running around and thinking of all the, the technical details going in a scene like that? There's a certain point where you just have to let go. And I, I, work, uh, I work with an acting coach, not on set, but before. And uh, he always tells me the one thing he says is just don't question your character and don't overthink it. And those are things that while I'm on set, I always try and remind myself of. Um, but I think the most physically and mentally challenging day on set was the scene where Jill is... is tied up and she's trying to think of a way to get out of this situation. And so she's using her experience on movie sets to understand what the scenario is and how to get out of it and how to trick this guy and manipulate him. And that night we were shooting in Madrid in October or November in a, in a warehouse with only three walls. 
so the fourth wall was completely open, and it was freezing outside, and you saw the robe. It was, it was paper thin, and they kept saying, oh, we'll come get you, like, stuff to hide underneath. And I was, I was ch teeth chattering. <laughs> so that was probably the hard, one of the hardest scenes to shoot because you have to remove that uh, once the cameras start rolling. But in the end, um, I think it actually helped. A lot of the filming was also done uh, at night. How, how did it fuck up your, your, your bio-written, your sense of day and night? How difficult oh, was that? How could I forget that, actually? That was tough because the shooting schedule was, was all over the place. Um, so there would be days where I would shoot five days straight and then have two days off. Shoot another four days and then have seven days off. And then go back and shoot five days, five days, so on and so on. And so I had to, on my off days, keep that night schedule sort of a creature of habit. So I, time and place was so strange, especially in Spain where they have siesta. So I was waking up when people were going to take a nap. And so I couldn't get lunch or I couldn't get breakfast. Um, so it felt kind of isolated uh, while living in Spain, basically. I mean, and I think that in a way sort of added to, to the character and the paranoia of, of just being like, where the hell am I? Um, but again, Nacho, is, he's a true champion on, on set. You know, you'd see some people kind of falling asleep in the corner, and he was always like 110 all the time. He had so much energy. I was here last October for my book, The Juliet Society, uh, but I was in Antwerp. Uh, very beautiful. People are really nice. Um, I think I'm pretty lucky. Both times I've been here, it's been fairly short trips, I just got in today. Um, and I always tell people the thing that really solidifies like a good experience for me in a different country is, is the people I'm surrounded by. And so this is a great festival. It's a awesome program. The programming here is awesome. Um, I love that they've incorporated music and everyone here has been great and treated me right. And so I leave here happy and, and wanting to come back to Belgium. <laughs> Yes, it was, uh, it was not just idea, but it was tongue-in-cheek, definitely. <laughs> Alright, uh, one last question. Is it true that uh, Elijah Wood is actually like this big in real life? No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, alright. Here's nog a geweldig applause. Sasha Gray, thank you very much for coming back. Thank you very much. Woo! Marry me!